They told me I had to get down to St. Luke's right away, that Dawn was at that hospital fighting for her life. I was going, how can she be fighting for her life? She left for school this morning, looking healthy, never been sick. While I was there at the hospital, I had to keep my hand pressed over my mouth to keep from screaming in horror. I kept going, this is all a bad dream. I'm going to wake up and this will not have happened. This is Christina with the Sisyphean Journal, and today is February 11th. Welcome to the Sisyphean Journal, where we talk about women's abortion deaths and how to prevent them. And in this case, we're talking about the abortion death of a 13-year-old girl whose parents didn't even know she was pregnant. They didn't know anything until it was too late to do anything to save her. Dawn was the 13-year-old daughter of married pastors. And She'd been the stereotypical good girl who got good grades in school, did her homework without being told, um, helped around the house. But there was something her parents hadn't known about her, and that was that she and her 15-year-old boyfriend had gotten into a situation. Dawn was pregnant. She was afraid to go to her parents, so she went to a counselor at school. The counselor at school contacted Eastern Women's Center in New York and arranged an abortion for this 13-year-old girl without telling her parents. The 15-year-old boyfriend paid for the procedure with a credit card that he had borrowed from a relative. Dawn was 21 weeks pregnant. Did she even understand how risky a 21-week abortion was? Could this poor kid think past anything but not being, not feeling able to tell her parents? Again, if she had gone to a pro-life pregnancy center, they could have reassured her. They could have helped her tell her parents because I'm sure her parents would have preferred to find out that their daughter was pregnant and walk through it with her than the situation that wound up playing out. Now, the counselor that spoke to Dawn at Eastern Women's Center saw that this little girl was frightened and wrote in her chart that she should be treated with tender, loving care. But the doctor and the anesthetist, however, didn't seem to have the same image of tender, loving care that that counselor had. According to the suit later filed by Dawn's parents, the uh, um, anesthetist did not administer enough medication to get her through the entire procedure. So about halfway through, she started to cough, vomit, and choke. Alan Klein, the doctor who was doing the abortion, just put a breathing tube in her throat and set her aside. She was left unattended. And while she was left unattended, she lapsed into a coma. Eventually, somebody noticed she was in a coma rushed her to the hospital, and that was the point at which somebody thought to do the obvious, which was contact Dawn's parents and let them know what was going on. A day after day, Dawn's family gathered at her bedside as she lay in a coma. They played tapes to her of the family singing gospel songs together. They talked to her. They tried everything to bring her back from the brink of death to no avail. Dawn died February 11th, 1985, without ever having regained consciousness. Now, the family sued, and they won. But as a New York Post headline I saw put it, 1.2 million won't bring her back. The story featured this picture of Dawn at her junior high graduation, gazing out, smiling at a future she was never going to have because her parents weren't allowed to help her when she was at her most desperate. 